Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over part two of my detailing arsenal. We're going to cover interior and all-purpose cleaners, interior protectants, carpet and upholstery cleaners, glass cleaners, quick detailers, and buff pads. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get this episode started. If you can tell in the background, it's a stormy day here in Mississippi, so you may hear a little thunder clapping in the background, but no big deal. Guys, first up are my all-purpose cleaners slash interior cleaners. One that I usually roll with the most is going to be the Meguiar's Detailer Professional's Choice. It's a pretty good all-purpose cleaner. You can buy it in bulk and it dilutes down. They also give you a spray bottle when you buy it. And my other that I use is the CarPro Multi-X. Multi-X works good and I kind of use it on the higher end interiors or leathers and it's pretty safe. Never had an issue with either one of them on anything. Just dilute them right. I try not to dilute anything stronger than 1 to 10 on the interior. And that's about what I keep these diluted at when I use them. Maybe delete the Multi-X a little higher, maybe 1 to 15. But they both work really well on the interior and I have used them on the exterior, especially the Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner. During pollen season here in the spring, we get pollen that sits in every crack and crevice. I'll put some all-purpose cleaner in the foam cannon along with the foam shampoo and I'll spray it on there and it'll help break that pollen out. When you spray it down with the foam cannon with the all-purpose cleaner in it and go back over it with the pressure washer, it'll help hose out that pollen, helps loosen it up and push it out. But these are my go-to's right here. Can't go wrong with either one of them, but if you're just starting out or you're just doing your own vehicle, I'd suggest go with the Meguiar's Detailer Professional Choice. You can get it in bulk, it'll last you forever, and you can also use it all around the house. The Multi-X is a little more pricier, but it's a good all-around, all-purpose cleaner. It's just a little pricey. But you do get what you pay for when you get it. Next up are my interior protectants, and I'm also going to go ahead and squeeze my leather cleaner and leather conditioner because I only use one brand. But my interior protectants, most of the time I roll with 303 Aerospace Protectant. Works really good, doesn't leave a greasy residue behind. It, it's hard to explain, but it shines up the plastic, but it also leaves a matte finish, leaves a deeper, darker, richer finish. And I also use the 303 Aerospace on the exterior plastics. and. On the leather cleaners, I roll with Chemical Guys, the Chemical Guys Leather Cleaner and Chemical Guys Leather Conditioner. I've never had an issue with it. It's always seems to have worked the best for me. I've only tried a few other brands, but I keep going back to this. I only use the leather cleaner if I have to. I use it on special leathers or higher end leathers. Most of the time I can use the Multi-X on most leather interiors. But that's what I use and the leather conditioner Leather conditioner works great, massages in great. You don't have an issue with having excess left over. It usually always massages and works in great, even on the seats that come from the factory with the coating on it already. But these are my go-tos right here. Not much, but you can't go wrong with either of the interior protectors. But if I were picking, I would probably go with 303 Aerospace. The silk shine dressing does do well. And I've used it a few times, but overall I would go with the 303 Aerospace Protectant. But I threw the Silk Shine dressing in for honorable mention because I've used it too and it works pretty good. Alright, next up is what I use for carpet and upholstery cleaning. Alright, first on the left is the PNS setup. These three things are supposed to work in conjunction with each other. You're supposed to use the Terminator Enzyme Spot and Stain, then the Carpet Bomber, and after you do your work on it and do extraction or clean the spot up or whatever you're going to do you're supposed to put finisher peroxide on so this setup does work pretty good and you don't have to use them together mainly what I use is carpet bomber for extracting and if just like the odor X if there is a smell I'll use the finisher peroxide to spray over it, it just depends on how bad the smell is and what the smell is and on the right, I have the Chemical Guys Fabric Clean. It's a carpet and upholstery cleaner, and it works really well also on its own. It is a gel, and you can put it in a spray bottle or a sprayer or a foamer, however you want to do it. I mainly like to use a sprayer. You can use it like that, spray it on the carpet, use a drill brush, extract it, or if you're doing like a small spot, you can spray it on that spot after it's diluted. Rub it out with the microfiber towel or use a brush to brush it or whatever you want to do. Then you can spray a little water out of a spray bottle and shop back it. 
pretty easy to use, but these are my go-tos for the carpet and upholstery cleaning. As next up are my air fresheners. I really don't go with much. I didn't include this in the intro, but you can't do an interior detail arsenal video without giving up what your go-tos are for air fresheners. So my go-tos are the, Pina, the Perfect Pina Colada from 3D, the 3D Sweet Strawberry, and 3D Odor X. And the Perfect Pina Colada and the Sweet Strawberry are dedicated air freshener only. The Odor X helps eliminate odor caused by smoke, vomit, urine, food, and by digesting the bacteria and eliminating the odors. So you got a car that has an odor in it and you don't extract it to get the odor out, you can put some Odor X if you know the source of the odor. Another thing I like to use the Odor X for is when you do floor mats, you clean them with your all-purpose or fabric cleaner, you pressure wash them out, you extract them, they still have a bad smell to them. Sometimes the Odor X will take care of that and sometimes you just need to rewash them. Most of the time I'll rewash them, but sometimes you still have to lay down a coat of Odor X over the floor mats. So that does help. But these are my go-tos with uh, air fresheners and dissolving odors. All right, guys, another thing I didn't include in my intro, but does definitely need to go over and what you do need in your arsenal is spray bottles. You can buy spray bottles. The two that I recommend are Chemical Guys and the Car Pro. They have the dilution ratios on it so you can dilute. But as long as you're mathematically inclined somewhat and you can count out like 10 ounces to one ounce of product, you don't necessarily need the dilution ratios, but they do help when you start mixing product together. So this is definitely an item you need to have in your arsenal. You can never have too many spray bottles. I have a lot of empty spray bottles I haven't used, but it, having empty spray bottles around that I haven't used versus not having a spray bottle when I need it, I'll take having the empty spray bottles left around. All right, guys, next up are glass cleaners. These are my two go-to glass cleaners, the 3D glass cleaner and the stoner invisible glass. They're aerosol. The aerosol seems to work best for me, so that's why I go with those. It seems to be better at not leaving streaks on windows combined with a good waffle weave towel. Or if you don't have a waffle weave towel and you're doing your own car, a good paper towel, they'll work. They'll clean the glass, and they are tent safe. Both are tent safe. So these are the ones I go with. I also have chemical guys, but I didn't include it in this. I don't really particularly care for the chemical guys glass cleaner that I have. The 3D and the Invi Stoner Invisible Glass are just much more efficient. But I tell you what I do use that chemical guys glass cleaner for. We have a glass top stove and it cleans the glass top stove great. And I also wear eyeglasses. My daughter wears eyeglasses and my wife wears eyeglasses and the chemical guys <laughs> glass cleaner does great at cleaning the eyeglasses also so not for nothing i do keep it i just don't use it in detailing all right next up is the quick detailers that i use so I, I use the optimum instant detailer and gloss enhancer the optimum can be used on a wet surface also you can kind of use it as a drying aid or you can use it to help gloss up whatever you're drying off and then there's speed wipe speed wipe works pretty good both of them, you use them if you get like bird poop or some other type of dirt or stain on your car. You can spray over the affected area, let it sit for a few seconds and wipe it off. I would say if you're doing it on bird poop or something like that, let it sit on for a second, but it will wipe off. They are very, they are lubricated very well, so there's not much chance of scratching the paint when you use them. These are my two go-tos. If I had to pick one out of these, I would go probably with the optimum instant detailer and gloss enhancer all right guys next up we're going to go over polishing or buffing pads one of my go-to's that i use probably 80 percent of the time is going to be the euro fiber pad i think it's made by buff and shine you can use it with cut compound you can use it as a one step or an all-in-one you can use it with the polish you can also use it with the sealant so this pad will cut it will polish and it will finish it's a good go-to pad i have probably 20 of these that I keep on me. This one's well used that I'm showing, but it's a good pad to go with. And if you're looking with for one pad that can do everything, order you several Eurofiber pads. You won't regret it. You'll love them. You'll see how good they work. I would advise, however, to use a different pad for each stage. For using a cutting compound, use that pad only with the cutting compound and switch to a new Eurofiber pad for a all-in-one 
or a polish or a, or a sealant or a finishing product. All right, moving on to the next set of pads I use. These are all cutting pads. You have a wool pad, a yellow pad, and an orange pad. All right, the wool pad is for heavy cutting. You would use that to cut out heavy defects, but this is a uh, smart pad made by Lake Country, and it's pretty much designed to work with the dual action. Most wool pads work better on a rotary, but the smart pad does work pretty good on a dual action polisher. Then you have the yellow pad. It's a little heavier cutting than the orange, but you use it with along with compound to cut out defects and also to buff out any type of sanded areas that you may have wet sanded. And then there's the orange pad. It does the same thing pretty much as the yellow pad, but it's not as aggressive, but it does work and it does cut. Another good rule of thumb is with the foam pads is the firmer they are, the more that they're gonna be geared towards cutting. So the softer pads would be geared more for polishing. The firmer pads are more for cutting, but they're also color coded. The yellow and the orange out of most manufacturers is gonna be a cutting pad. And also on the wool, a wool pad out of most manufacturers is also gonna be a cutting pad. But there are only a few wool pads on the market that are good for a DA. And the Smart Pad from Lake Country is one of them. These are all Lake Country pads, by the way. So you can find them online. You can get them on Amazon, Autopia, or AutoGeek. All right, next up with the pads are the uh, polishing pads. The white, the blue, and the light green are dedicated colors for polishing pads with most manufacturers. These are happen to be Lake Country pads. These pads work good, but they are for polishing only, so you can use it with something like 3D1 as the uh, polishing phase of the 3D1 of the Car Pro Essence when you're getting ready to polish out a vehicle, do a final polish, or prep it for a ceramic coating. These are the pads you would use. They are not as firm as the cutting pads, but the white pad is probably the firmest, followed by the blue and then followed by the light green. These are the pads you would use to polish with. I would use those on a DA only. You could use them on a rotary buffer, but it is probably more preferable to use them on a dual action polisher. Another cool thing about the Lake Country pads, they tell you on the back of the pad whether it's a cutting or a polishing pad. So as you can see this orange pad, it says orange light cutting, and the green pad is green polishing. So you would use the orange to cut, and you for cutting, you would use a compound, and on the blue or the light green is for polishing, and you would use a polish for that. Next up is the final part of the buffing pads. This is a finishing pad. This is also made by Lake Country. These are part of the smart pads also. It says on the back, black finishing. And this is what you would use to apply sealant, wax, or things of that nature onto the car. This would be your final step. If I had to pick one, I would probably go with the Euro fiber because it's so versatile. You can do so much with it. Instead of having several different types of pads, order you three or four Euro pads and do everything you need to do. If you're only doing your car, if you're running a business, then obviously you would need a bigger variety because different clears respond to different type of pads. So that's going to be it for the buff pads. All right, guys, that's going to do it for part two. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you will, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Leave me anything in the comments. If you have any suggestions or have any suggestions on any future videos, leave it in the comments. We'll see what we can do. That's going to do it for part two. I, again, I appreciate you watching it and uh, taking time out of your day. You could be watching other stuff, but you're watching me, and I appreciate that. That's all I got. Be safe. Have a good day. And catch me for part three when part three comes out. Thank you and have a great day.